2 to 6 training a week, 8 to 15 hours weekly for 12 years. That's 5,000 to 9,000 hours of training. This is what I did. And today is my lifting anniversary. In this video, I want to share what all these years of bodybuilding made me learn about the sport, fitness, health, and myself. The first thing that comes to me when I think about what lesson or advice I could give you, well, that is that you really do not give a shit about genetic, as in genetic for muscle building potential. The truth is that for most of us, we are average, since genetic for muscle building is kind of like the IQ representation, a bell curve. 6 out of 10 of you are average, 2 out of 10 are subpar, 2 out of 10 are superior. Our sport was built, shaped, and keep living of abnormal superior genetic phenomenon, reaching absurd size and telling us, after gent, that there is some kind of secret or just run harder, bro. The harsh truth is that life is unfair and you got what you got. And you shouldn't care. Were you planning to compete at the IRS level of bodybuilding? No. Were you planning to try and compete and get judged by other for your work? No. So who gives a fuck? Most of you are just in for the general benefit of training. You want to look good, feel good, do better and be better. You want a healthy, good-looking, strong body. Not a peak high level elite bodybuilding one. For that reason, genetic isn't an excuse as you are here and in for the long game, not a few months. If it takes a while, it will take a while. If it's a bit faster or a bit slower, it will be a bit faster or a bit slower. Most of you will obtain a decent physique in about a year of training, a good one in 3 and a great one in 5, while staying natural. After that, many things can happen, but genetic isn't part of a problem. Your application, dedication and seriousness are. Nail this tree and you're good. Motion is the potion. Nice one, eh? As it indicates, pretty self inflammatory motion is the potion for many issues and problems that could arise. Sedentarity and low activity are the prime reason so many people are out of shape and sickly nowadays. Simply moving more would fix a ton of issues for them. But even for you, with a regular gym bro or strength athlete, it can help, especially regarding digestion, joint and mental health. If you sit on your ass all day and you just train a couple hours per week, you aren't active. You need more. So here is a little tip for you. Every day, walk at least 7,000 steps. If it's an off day, or you do not train in the gym, you can throw some light stretches or yoga, or simply do more neat. This will pay rapidly dividends and make you more nimble, pain-free, and put you in a great mood while also helping for your body composition. And that in my book is a win-win. Everything works until it doesn't. This is something that I have said a few times in stories and comments and emails and it always startles people, just like it did me. What does that mean? How can it work and then just stop? Well, we could go in depth regarding the law of accommodation of the one about circumposition and plenty of other things, but I will keep it simple. There are cycles in life and there are cycles in training. What you did that worked as a beginner do not work anymore now that you are intermediate or advanced. Why? Well, it's too easy, or you're older and more beat up, or you can push and strain so much harder now that it becomes quite stressful to a joint, instead of a muscle. So you grow tired of doing the same thing and the same exercise, in a nutshell, that you once liked and approached with patience and you just don't work the same now. That is exactly the same mindset for the programs and the routines. For example, I started like everyone by deadlifting on the floor, because that's just how you deadlift, period. As time went by and as I grew stronger and stronger, I would accumulate so much fatigue and issues because of it, eventually I dropped it and focused on other hip hinges. I realized I prefer block and rack pulls, RDL and hip thrust as they work the same muscle deadlift do, but I enjoy it. I don't feel beat up or pain after it and simply like them better. Also, I love full body. I love to train for 3 hours, but as I progress in life, sometimes, even with all the good will I am capable of, it's just not possible. And besides, they leave me almost lifeless afterward, and I need my brain and energy for you guys, in coaching and in content creation. So I adapted with upper lower, and right now, with a weird bastardized version of a double PPL that I kinda enjoy doing, leaving me fresh for the mountain of work that I got. That same PPL wouldn't have worked years back. And just like for you, what worked won't necessarily work now. Third one. Pump is a cure. Now that is a funny line that I originate, if I'm not mistaken, from Antoine Vaillant, which is a fantastic Canadian athlete and bodybuilder, one of the most inspirational and positive figures of our sport in the last decade. That man would sometimes get sick and still go train, saying he would feel better by pumping. Same thing after a bad day, and that became a little motto. Guess what? This is also true. 
pumping blood in your body is the cure to many ailments, sedentarity, tissues, and simply being out of shape. Weight training, and more precisely bodybuilding, is literally the fountain of youth and the closest thing you will ever get to something that both build you up, shape you good, and remove most of the bad stuff for your body. Furthermore, a full video is needed to touch on the topic, but getting a great pup is a good way to grow muscle and promote a lot of good things, such as great circulation both on blood and lymph, proper hydration and irrigation of the tendon, plus a key school effect on your cardiovascular system as a whole, heart, veins, and the little captors that are on the veins that make them grow bigger or smaller, depending on what is needed. It's literally making your life force flow everywhere in your body, and it's great. If pump is the cure, strength is the answer. How so? Well, to paraphrase the legendary football and sport prep coach Dan Jones, you can never go wrong with strong. Meaning that whatever program or lift you want to do and focus, as long as you get stronger, it will be good. Getting stronger is never a disadvantage. Have you seen those power lifters from the 80s that could compete on stage on Saturday and do a meet on Sunday? Or these chimps that would transition from powerlifting to bodybuilding? How did they do it? They got filthy strong, and when they switched goal, all that strength potential became available for them to get a huge margin of improvement in growth special of training. In other words, someone squatting 6 plate will have much more room to grow his legs than someone squatting 4 plates. So, do not shy away from heavyweight, hard work, and the basics, because that's how all champ were made. Alright, recovery ambivalence. The more you train, the more you need to recover. But the more you also got to train to keep getting results. But the harder you train, the harder you will need to recover. Hmm, so what are we supposed to do? Well, recovery is key, and you did it way more than you think, and at the same time, you also will be able to train harder, so everything will fall into place. I always surprise people when I say I just train 3 to 4 times a week. It seems to not be enough for them. They, however, do not realize how hard those sessions are, figuratively and relatively both. And also what I do on my off day like cardio or yoga or just taking care of my meat. Still, each time I get back in the gym, I am slightly better, even if over ever so slightly, and that's thanks to recovery. So please focus on your recovery so that you can train more and better. Next one, injury will happen. Injury will happen because it is what it is. Here are a few good things to know. An injury is never smart. You never get injured being smart. Did you warm up properly? Ain't good? Slept good? Are your chill or stressed? Is your program really that good? If you think yes, well, definitely not. In retrospect, every injury I got was because I disregarded one of those elements. As for an injury itself, it ranged from those horrible stuff you can see on a gym fail compilation to a simple tinnitus or a muscle tweak. Or not. When this happens, run a little diagnosis and check everything you need to do and see where it seems to go. From diet, sleep, and daily habits, up to exercise selection, order, and programming. Regardless when an injury happens, do not be scared, heal, take care of it, and keep doing what you can around it. And if possible, make sure to prehab for it to never happen again. Most of the time, it is possible. Next one, stability precede intensity. I've heard so much doo-doo shit these last few years regarding what's supposed to be the best exercise for X, or the best way to Y, and how to grow optimally Z. You wouldn't believe it. The truth is that for bodybuilding, you need to be intense, in a sense that you need to do hard, high quality, somewhat at or close to failure sets, constantly, repeatedly, with the least amount of unknowns or error margin. That is even truer as you get stronger and stronger, as you need more, but also take more risk. Shouldering a 20 kg dumbbell isn't the same at all when you do it with a 50 kg one. Your water to cuff, elbow ligaments, and muscle aren't taking the same shield stress. Hence why so many high-level top athletes, whatever if competing or not, are using more and more machines or Smith machine and do not doing as much free weight, or at least not rise from the start in the training. Why? Well, let me ask you this. Is it easier to go hard and heavy on split squat with a barbell on a bossy ball or an axe squat? Is it easier to strain and grind on a rep off Smith machine press or dumbbell press? Is it easier to recover from high volume barbell squat as a whole or from a few different sets of different squad variation on machines and the smith as well. This is why stability is important in bodybuilding and can never truly be intense without it. Fun training is better than optimal training. Yep, I said it. What do you think is better? A program absolutely perfect or a one that you enjoy? For the first weeks, the perfect one will be better. And then for the upcoming months and years, the other will be better. 
Know why? Because adherence, patience and commitment are also extremely important for training. It's not only what you train, but how you train it. It's not just doing hard sets, it's being passionate and invested about it. It's not just clocking in when you need to, but also doing it with a fire in your belly. If it was important, well, you just go 80 hours per week to a gym doing fuck all to will be huge. But that's not true, isn't it? Furthermore, the optimized bandwagon resolve on using studies for it. First thing first, studies aren't all of quality, and then even if they were, 7 out of 10 are done on sedentaries, about 2 out of 10 on beginner, and the rest can be used, but sometimes groups are so small or there is so many unknown and not checked parameter. I mean, at best, it gives you an idea, not a rigid rule to follow. You do not believe me? If being so smart and peer reviewed with evidence based training was so good, why are there so much more supposed bodybuilding expert, and why are there so many kind of illiterate top elite bodybuilders? Answer is that your daddy science studies aren't even in top 10 of required things to make a champ and get results. But common sense, genetic, hard work, both of food and nutrients, and a fanatic like patient for training are, and even if you do not want to become a champ, learn to adjust your training and embrace the process first and foremost and be called driven regarding a measurement or a lift for interest, but not out of internal struggles, feelings that you will be and think better as you get bigger. You seldom won't enjoy what you do, take pleasure into taking care of yourself and building yourself up. Don't feel that pressure so hard about going as fast as possible for everything you do, because chances are your body will do what it wants, when it wants. Diet is everything you consume, meaning that it isn't just macro or micro or water. It's also what you see, watch, read, listen, and touch. Diet word itself comes from dieta of ancient Greek, meaning regulation or dwelling. Strictly speaking, it means your whole lifestyle, basically. How is it important? Well, we are aware of the deleterious effect of social media on self-consciousness and appreciation as it kind of twists our standard. But the same shit can happen when consuming doom media, fear-oriented news, spectacular or violent content, lustful, focused pics everywhere, gluttony, access. By no means I am a judge of politics and religion, but what I mean is that you can have the most supposedly perfect diet and training program. If you spend your day listening to stressful content, wondering if you're good enough compared to whatever dude on Instagram or TikTok, and you're being bombed non-stop by ads for dating apps, or food delivery stuff, you aren't going to be healthy and in the right place for long. Learn that the more isn't always the best, and learn to cut out things, to not even listen to whatever, or follow trends and drama with totally unknown or celebrity people. Your peace of mind is worth your own weight in gold for your progress and your well-being both. This is why you need to prioritize raw, natural food that are as gentle as possible with your digestive system. This is also why you shouldn't rely on things like if it fits your macro or simple macro tracking, as food quality itself and micro are keys too. And no, supplements are not going to carry you endlessly when you have a shit diet. Health should always be in your top 3 priorities regarding bodybuilding, meaning that even if at, at a time you just want to focus on sheer size or strength increase, with let's say a specific muscle group in mind, health should be right after, meaning that we'll pay attention to the signal it send and to any problem that seems to arise. Turning a blind eye to this is how you get overused injuries or burnout-like situation later down the road. When something starts niggling at you, assess and check it out. When something hurts, listen to it. When some food is making you feel bad, listen to it. Yeah, sure, 18 inches arm is cool, but you know what is even cooler? Not being broken down at 40 year old. Good way to do that is to do a yearly or bi-yearly blood work. You know the usual stuff, white and red blood cells, thyroid, various hormones and mineral values, inflammation markers, liver and kidney. Just make sure to always stay active and value your rest and sleep. And last but not least, truth is in the middle. High volume or high intensity full body or body part split, at failure or far away from it, natty or enhanced, science-based or bro science, carnivore or vegan, intermittent fasting or regular meals, keto or carb-loaded. No, look guys, truth is in the middle. By that I mean, it's not a straight line with a good and a bad side, but rather a spectrum with two extreme and a lot of different things and variation and options that are happening in between. As we said earlier, everything works until it doesn't, and genetics shouldn't matter. Well, preferences do, and might as well try and test it for yourself. Experience is the best teacher, as we say, and is the same here. Try things. 
titles at failure sets that seem to be things nowadays with Mike Mentor. But you know what? There was a time when I was doing 30 to 70 sets weekly per muscle, just like Arnold and his gym bros. And you know what happened? I gained from it. Not the best way to do it, certainly not the smartest or the fastest, but it worked. And it worked all the same when I was doing only two sets per exercise and being extra focused on my recovery. So I learned, I can push here, but I need to be careful there. I tried keto, it fucked me up, from top to bottom. I tried a bottle of carb. Meh, I was sleepy, but it was cool. I did intermittent fasting variation, and it was great for a while. I and mean, it wasn't. Again, yeah. you know what's great? Having three stress-free meals a day. Stop going for extremes. Stop trying to think there is this one big side, and it's only liars, and on the other side, it's just a real, holy, beautiful truth. It's not. Thank you.